So I've only got a couple stories for you today. The first one is all about the Epic Game Store. And then the second one is about what Jason Rubin of Oculus envisions virtual reality as being here in the future. Sources and timestamps you can find in the description as always. So like I said, the next big story is all about the Epic Game Store and their first, well, pro probably first, entrance into virtual reality. And that is going to come in the form of Falcon Age, a game that was originally originally debuted earlier this year on the PlayStation VR. And it is going to be coming out on the PC VR here in the summer. One of the few things that we can expect out of the game itself is that it will support Steam VR as well as Oculus. So all of those headsets we can expect. However, because the Epic Game Store is going to be releasing its own virtual reality game, that just means that Valve may have a even bigger competitor on its hands than we at first realized. Because up until this point, Steam kind of held the market on VR games and VR support, kind of secluding the market a little bit. But if the Epic Game Store does in fact support the sale of virtual reality games as well as that entire marketplace, then the gaming market could very well be splintered into a duopoly more than, a, more than was originally thought. This last story of the night concerns an interview that Jason Rubin of Oculus had with GameSpot the other day. In it, he mentions quite a few things about not only his goals as a company, but also where he envisions virtual reality heading. One of those things in particular was about hardware and whether or not consoles had any possibility of disappearing. And his answer was no, consoles are not heading anywhere. This in fact echoes something that I brought up earlier when the CEO of Sony well, not Sony, but the CEO of PlayStation was talking about the possibility of a PlayStation 6. The, the, the CEO of PlayStation, Jim Ryan, had mentioned that he doesn't, he doesn't imagine a PlayStation 6 coming to fruition. However, at that time, I brought up the video, I brought up in my video that I disagreed with him because virtual reality is going to require that tether and in order to get the best experience possible, you will require a tethered experience. And that same idea was echoed by Mr. Rubin during this GameSpot interview. One of the other major things was that he envisions virtual reality as being a culmination of entertainment, whether it be 3D movies or 2D movies or maybe even gaming in general. All of those are going to give the best experience possible in virtual reality. Whether you'll be seeing arrows flying through your face in a movie in 3D or maybe uh, playing, your be playing the best editions of your 2D games on your virtual reality consoles in such a way that you feel a lot more immersed in what you're doing. However, in order to do so, one of the things that he also mentions is the steps that he wants to take to make the Rift 2 a possibility, like reducing the weight, reducing the length of wires, and, well, generally providing the best immersive experience possible. That being said, he also touches on where development is heading. Over the last few years, there wasn't a whole lot of big names or big projects that were really touched on or launched. However, as we had seen through at this last E3, there are quite a few large, expansive, triple a projects that we can see over the next year which means that these things took time and over that last time 
VR has proven itself as a marketable system. It's proven itself as a quality gaming market. So we can expect more productions and more high quality content in days to come. If you guys are still here, don't forget to check out my next video when I'll be going over a major update we can expect for Beat Saber for all major headsets. If you liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.